maybe I shouldn't tell you guys that. Is that a spoiler? I was like being judgy about YA because I'm not YA. Family, family fun, it's not family fun. Her, why did I say it like that? But I found a post-it note with what looks like some book titles in it that maybe I was supposed to check out and I never did, so there's a find. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be a little something different. And I feel like I've done a few videos lately where I'm like, it's gonna be a little something different. But I've had some requests from you guys to do a bookshelf tour. And I'll be honest, I kind of don't wanna do it because it's so much work in the in like the filming and the editing and all the things. But I totally get the curiosity about like what's happening behind me because obviously you guys just see a snippet of it and there's a whole bunch of books I haven't talked about and this is what I came up with because I know there's a whole bunch of books or there's at least a few books that I should declutter. There's books that need to be read and there's books that need to be dusted and cleaned because it's been a long time since I've taken everything off the shelf, cleaned it, reorganized it and done all things. So what I thought we would do is I'm gonna go one shelf at a time, pull the books down, go through the books, show you what I've got, hopefully declutter a few things if I'm not jazzed about them, and hopefully discover a couple favorites. I pulled some randos off my shelf last year and was totally surprised by how much I loved them and was having that like, why didn't I read this sooner feeling. So I'm hoping that that's gonna happen. And then if I've got some that I'm just not quite sure about, I thought maybe I could do like a try a chapter tag or something like that. So I'm gonna keep it a little bit loose. Maybe this will evolve as I get more into it. Maybe I'll create some rules, probably not. Hopefully this will satisfy the curiosity for people who wanna see what's on my shelf. And then if you're sort of of the unhaul decluttering kind, hopefully this will maybe like, I don't know, hit those notes of someone who likes to watch some decluttering happen because it all needs to happen. And that's what we're going to start to do today. All the books came down, no book left behind. Okay, let's do this thing. So in the interest of time, I'm obviously not gonna go into huge detail on every single book because we'd be here all day. But I'll tell you if I read it or not, I'll tell you if I liked it or not. Theoretically, if I didn't like it, why is it still here? But, you know, it happens. So in no particular order, obviously, because I just put them all on the floor. First up is Leanne Moriarty's The Husband's Secret. I read this years ago. I totally loved it. I read it after I read Big Little Lies. That was my first Leanne Moriarty. If you like her, I would recommend this book. Multiple points of view, multiple timelines, families coming together, people coming together, all the things. The next two books are both by Tana French and they're part of the Dublin Murder Squad series. I haven't read either of these. I only read In the Woods, the first one. I did make a deal with myself that I'm going to get back into the series this year because I really did enjoy it. I am gonna read The Likeness next, which you'll see maybe one of these days, <laughs> but that's the next book in the series. And I know you don't have to read them in order, so I don't know if I will from there. The Secret Place is the one that intrigues me a lot as well because there's some boarding school vibes to this one and you guys know I love that. So keeping these. The next book I have is Her by Laura Zygman and she wrote Animal Husbandry, which I loved. And this came out a long time ago, I'm not gonna date myself, but I saw her at a book signing. And if you guys, again, have followed me, you know I have talked about the bookstore Brookline Booksmith, which was one of my favorite bookstores when I lived in Boston and they used to do tons of author events. So I got to meet her and she signed my book and I'm obsessed. I haven't read this in forever. So this is a book that I would love to reread. Not super long, big fan of hers. Next up, full of notes, is Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. I did a separate video on this one. This is self-help. Lots of tabs in it. I've done the audiobook of this as well. This is about how to really set goals, knock them down, kind of take control of your life. 
I enjoyed it. It is, it says a shame-free plan for embracing and achieving your goals. So obviously a big fan of that and I'm keeping it. Next book I have is One of Us is Next by Karen McManus. And this is the sequel to One of Us is Lying. This has a book plate signature that I haven't posted in it yet from Y'all Stay Home. And I haven't read this one yet, but I'm going to. I did unhaul One of Us is Lying and now I'm kind of wondering why, but I did. So this is the sequel. The next book I have is Hollywood Homicide by Kelly Garrett. And I actually started to read this one, as you can see, and I didn't get too far into it, 20 pages. I was having a really hard time in February connecting with any book. And I started and stopped three different books. This was one of them. Before I finally just switched gears and read a Taylor Jenkins read. And I'm gonna go back to it. So I had one historical fiction and two thrillers that I, like thriller mystery. I think this is more cozy mystery that I tried to read and I'm gonna get back to it. So this is a woman who is trying to collect money, like a reward for helping to solve a hit and run. And you know, she gets too close to it and somebody's coming for her. The next book is by one of my most favorite people, Jennifer Hillier, Little Secrets. I read this last year, I totally loved it. Jar of Hearts was the first book of hers that I read and it's the one I love the most at this point. I still need to read her backlist, but this was her book that came out last year. Loved it. And then this will look familiar to you guys. Also, if you watch my year-end video, Confessions on the 745 by Lisa Unger. Loved this one as well. We've got dual timelines, multiple POVs, and just dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. So, you know, basically my sweet spot. Next up. Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is obviously already out in the UK because I have it. It's coming out in the US in March, maybe. I loved it. I love, love, love the series. The third book in the series is coming out this summer and I can't wait, huge fan. The next book I have is by Marion Keys and it's The Woman Who Stole My Life. Sorry, this is getting a little glary. I have not read this one. I bought this. A few years ago, last time I was in London at Waterstones, I hope to go back to London someday. I need to read this for all the obvious reasons. I just haven't yet, but I love her. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Hunneman. I read this two years ago, three years ago, I wanna say. This is also the UK cover. I really enjoyed it. This was definitely one that was outside my comfort zone and probably one of the first like booktube made me do it videos. And I read this not long after I, I came on booktube. This book surprised me, made me totally happy. Yay. Okay, now we have a trifecta of books I haven't read. Agatha Christie's Ordeal, of Innoc Ordeal by Innocence. Agatha Christie's Ordeal by Innocence. I'll be honest, I actually watched the movie of this, the newer one that came out on Amazon Prime, I wanna say a couple years ago, and I really liked it, and I wanna read the book. The next one is a had to have, haven't read it, Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This is, he just keeps going into other people's bodies and is trying to figure out who killed Evelyn. And I know, not that you should never not be paying attention to the book that you're reading. <laughs> but I know this is a book where you really kind of have to be in the right zone for it. So my zone will come and I will read it. And then next up is, so I was saying Joe Nesbo and I heard someone say it's Yo Nesbo. So if I'm saying it wrong, apologies. This is Headhunters. This is part of a series. I am gonna read The Snowman first, just because I've heard all sorts of dark and creepy things about the snowman, but I bought this a while ago because I'd heard such great things about it. So I'm holding on to this one and hopefully I'm gonna love it. I am not doing well with the unhaul, am I? Okay, next up is A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. I watched the movie of this before I read the book. I adored the movie. I just love the dark humor of it and the messed upness of it. I wound up doing part of the audiobook and part of the reading of this. I didn't love it, but I liked it. And one of the reasons I'm holding on to it is I really liked the point of view. Why am I blanking on her name? Not Stephanie, of Emily. So it's Stephanie and Emily. Emily goes missing and Stephanie is trying to find her. And Emily is just such a, like, a, like a dark and messed up person. I just love her so much. So I'm gonna hold on to this for a little while longer, but I have read it. A book I haven't read is Peter Swanson's All 
the beautiful lies i was gonna say all these beautiful lies i haven't read this one yet but you guys know i'm a huge fan of his as well and this one's going to get read he's got another book coming out like in a month i feel like i should reinstate my rule of you can't buy a new book by an author if you have an old book by them sitting on your shelf the next book I have is Trust Me by Hank Philippi Ryan, and I did read this a couple years ago. I really enjoyed it. I'm so overdue on reading more of her books. I'm embarrassed about it, but I really liked it. And this is the one that has that cool cover where it says Trust Me, and then you turn it this way, and it says Liar. So, keeping it. This is one of the books that I read last year that has been on my shelf forever, and I finally pulled it off, and I was so happy about it. And it's Everything You Want Me To Be by Mindy Mejia. This book totally took me by surprise in all the best ways and it's a mystery and there's multiple timelines and it's about grief and it's just so good the writing was so good the story was so good i went in thinking it was one thing it was something else entirely in all the best ways and this is one of the books that is inspiring me to do this so i can find other gems on my shelf the Sentence is Death by Anthony Horowitz. This is the sequel to The Word is Murder, which I read last year and loved. And my dad actually, he's already read this one and he told me this is better than The Word is Murder. So I just kind of need to get on it. But this is a series and this is the one where he inserts himself into the story. And it's just such a great like wink, wink, nod, nod. And also just a great mystery. So if you have not checked out his books, they're tremendously great. And The Word is Murder is a great series to start if you're looking for a place to start with Anthony Horowitz but I'm hearing this is great now this is a book that I bought because of the hype our kind of cruelty by Araminta Hall and I feel like a lot of people after they read you by Carolyn Kempness which I read and loved talked a lot about this book I haven't read this one yet and I need to because I'm curious about it and I'm you guys know I'm just like trash for an author I love plugging a book and Gillian Flynn says, quote, this is simply one of the nastiest and most disturbing thrillers I've read in years. I mean, I kind of feel like, <laughs> I kind of feel like it's talking to me. This is definitely dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things territory. Next up is a book that I got the last time I was able to go to a library sale, which again, I hope that happens too someday. This is part of a series. It's called Perfect Fifths by Megan McCaffrey. This is McCafferty, excuse me. This is the fifth book in her Jessica Darling series. I have all of them. I've never read this one. So when I saw it at the sale, I was like, oh my God, absolutely. I need to have it. But this is like, I haven't read these books in years you guys and it starts with jessica's in high school and then i think in this one she's graduated college so it follows her over the years and i would like to reread it from the beginning because honestly i don't really remember much of it because it's been years like years and years and years since i've read these books but she wrote a new book called the mall that came out sometime last year and i feel like it has tons of 80s vibes in it as well but I love these books, loved, loved, loved. So you'll see the whole series in this series. The next book I have is The Last Flight by Julie Clark. I read this last year and I really enjoyed it. This is dual POVs, dual timelines. We have two women, both strangers to each other, but both trying to escape their lives, meet at the airport, switch plane tickets. One of the planes goes down and we see one person's perspective leading up to the airport and one person's perspective after the airport. It was great fun. And then the next book is another one I read last year, which is The Lost Night by Andrea Bartz. And I liked it, but didn't love it. There was a little too much killer diatribe. Here's all the reasons why I'm such a horrible person and I did all the things and let me explain absolutely everything to you. But it's dual timelines. I enjoyed that part of it. Mystery in the past, mystery in the present, all the things. Next up is The Flight Attendant by Chris Bajalian. I just read this in January. This was long overdue for me. I liked it but didn't love it. It was alcoholic unreliable narrator, but then it took a turn for the better, but it took me a little while to get past alcoholic unreliable narrator, but still good. I also feel like there was so much hype around it that I was so built up for it that maybe if I actually had read the book when I bought the book, when it came out three years ago, it would have been different. So not bad by any stretch, but I feel like it's kind of, if you read Girl on the Train now versus when it first came out, it's like that kind of a thing. And then one of my most favorite books ever, again. So here's Jennifer Hillier's Jar of Hearts. Dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. 100, 100, 
so excited. I got to meet Jennifer Hillier. She signed my book. I will never get rid of signed books. And it's just a prized possession. And if you haven't read that book, you need to read that book. Killing it with this shelf. Next up, He Started It by Samantha Downing. This is her second book. It came out last year. Siblings going on a road trip. There's supposed to be a pot of gold at the end of an inheritance from grandpa. And things are messed up in this book. Loved every bit of it. This is the UK cover in case you're wondering because I am obsessed and I can't wait to see what she comes up with next. She announced her new book pretty recently. Auto buy, auto buy author for me. And then another auto buy author for me is Riley Sager and this is Final Girls and wait for it you guys. So what I will say is when I discovered, discovered Riley Sager when I was at a Thriller Fest, the paperback of Final Girls was out and I snagged it and I loved it and I just immediately needed to have it and I just am obsessed. It's my most favorite book of his, which is saying a lot. And then I found this on a bargain shelf at Barnes and Noble and I had to have them both. I know, I'm, I'm a whack job, it's totally fine. This is unnecessary to have two books of the same that's gonna happen a couple times here. I'm not getting rid of either. So this is the one I physically read and it's marked up and dog-eared and all the things. And then I'm gonna do a reread and I'm gonna reread the hardcover because I can. All right, next up is The Accident by Chris Pavoni. This was also a great book. I read this years ago. This came out, I don't know why I'm looking because I wasn't keeping track of when I was reading things, but he writes just such great, stories, they're twisted, there's so many characters and how they interconnect and how you can't even imagine how they could possibly connect. If you're if you're not reading Chris Pavoni and you like sort of CIA and espionage and across continents, it's just, it's really, really good. And this one is about a literary agent, which it's kind of, I love books about books, I love books about writers. I need to reread his books and I need to finish everything he's written. The Expats is his first book, which you're gonna see in a little bit too. Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I read this last year. I raved and raved and raved about it. This is gigantic. It is 100% worth it. If you haven't read this book and you love mixed media in books, if you love mysteries in the past, mysteries in the present, this is totally, this is, this is like nothing I've ever read before. And this was a book that scared me because of the size of it, but I am so glad I read it. It absolutely was amazing, blew me away. So well done. The next step is another Agatha Christie and it's Cards on the Table. I wanna say I was watching an interview with Anthony Horowitz and this is one of the books he recommended as a favorite of his. I might be making that up, but somebody that I adore and I think it was him recommended it. So I haven't read it yet, no judgment. I will, this is a Poirot, I love Poirot. And then the next one is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. I haven't read this either. This was, this was huge when it came out. And this is one of those books where I feel like I'm the only person in the world who hasn't read it. So I probably should get on that because B.A. Paris has written a whole bunch of books and there's a really good chance there's another one on my shelf I haven't read. The next book is another favorite author of mine and it's Lisa Jewell and this is The Third Wife. I haven't read it, I will read it. There's a ton of her books on my shelf and I'm gonna get more embarrassed the further into them we get because there's so many that I haven't read with no excuse. And then a book I did read and I absolutely loved is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is the first V.E. Schwab slash only V.E. Schwab that I have read. And I was just saying yesterday how I, I need to read Vengeful and I have it back there, but I wanna reread this first because it's been a while and then if you guys have seen my five star predictions Addie LaRue is on that and I have buddy reading plans to read that in March. Okay we're in the home stretch this is just a cover because I'm in the process of reading it in the process of reading it I'm currently reading it. This is Attica Locks Heaven My Home. This is the second book in the Highway 59 series about Texas Ranger and he, Darren Matthews. This I just, I adored the first book in this series and I'm blanking on the name of it, Bluebird, Bluebird, ha! So I will let you guys know what I think of it when I finish it, but there's the cover. The book is over there. So here's a book, finally, that I don't know about. Four Letter Word by Krista Desir, Desser, not sure. 
This was, I want to say, Books and Lala talked about this and that's why I bought it. This was one of those book outlet, get to $35 and it's free kind of a thing. And I don't even know what this one's about. So I'm actually going to put this one to the left, to the left. <laughs> and I'm going to put this into a try a chapter pile, which is something I also never do. But it says eight friends, one game, a dozen regrets. So this is definitely YA. And I'll let you guys know. But yes, finally a book that I'm unsure about. Another series which I've read, this is The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. This is part of the Truly Devious series. The fourth book is coming out. It was supposed to be a trilogy and then it was, I think, just such a whopping success that she's just gonna keep going and I'm here for it. So this is one of those series. It is a YA book and I totally was in the, I'm not gonna read YA because I'm not YA, but then someone, I wanna say Peter loves books. Peter likes books. Peter loves books talked about how great Truly Devious was, and finally I was like, get on it, see what's going on here. And I loved it. And this is mystery in the past, mystery in the present. There is a mystery that spans all three books. It was conceived that way. And then there are mysteries that get solved within each book. But the main character, Stevie, is a true crime fanatic. She is terrific. Loved that series. And I'm very curious to see what comes next. Two Can Keep a Secret, another Karen McManus book. I read this at the end of 2020 and I totally enjoyed it. Another UK cover and it's blue, it's awesome. This is The Reluctant Return Home. If you guys haven't seen my video about tropes I love, when our, our folks need to return home and they don't really want to. In this one, it is the children of someone who doesn't want to return home. And I really enjoyed it. It was a fast read, again, multiple POVs, mysteries in the past, mysteries in the present, and I liked it. Here is Joe Yo Nesbo's The Snowman. I already talked about this one. This was part of my Winterbury Reads recommendations as well. And this is a book that I am eager to read. And since there's more snow in the forecast this week, this is one of the ones where I'm like, maybe baby, it'll happen now. Oh, and in this one, our serial killer leaves snowmen on the front lawns of the women's houses that he abducts. Like, how messed up is that? Way to make the snowman into something, to, like, all I can think of is, like, poor Frosty. <sighs> Sinister. And then the last book from this shelf is Watermelon by Marion Keys. I also talked about this in my tropes about coming home again. This is not a thriller. This is about relationships and family. And the day you give birth to your baby, your husband tells you that he's leaving you and he's having an affair and all the things that happen after that. First book in the Walsh series. This is her first book that she ever wrote. And I love it. I need to reread it. As you can see, I started to collect the UK covers of these so that they match. And that's not important for this video, but I'm telling you anyway. So that was not successful in terms of unhauling, but the further down we go, the more I think there's potential for unhauling, whether or not I do it, we will see. But let me know what you guys think. Is this like remotely interesting? Is this at all fun for you guys? I certainly don't want to create content that nobody's interested in. And at the end of the day, I'm going to go through my bookshelf either way because I need to clean it and I do need to unhaul some books because I've got, I think you can see it over there. I've got books stacked that don't have a home because my bookshelf is packed with stuff. So let me know what you think. And if you have read any of the books I haven't, or if anybody's read this one, let me know. Let's talk down below, because that's always fun. But thank you guys for hanging out today. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope everybody's doing great. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.